Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Welcome to another tennis nerd video. This time I wanted to talk about string patterns. I get a lot of questions about string patterns. I recently posted a post about uh, Arena Sabalenka's tennis racket and uh, someone asked me what effect the 1820 versus 1619 version of the Blade Pro or the H22 that she uses, how it would affect her game. Uh, she uses the 1820 Sabalenka and the reason is that she needs uh, directional control. She has all the power she needs from her own game. She doesn't need a powerful frame. She doesn't need a lot of spin because she needs to hit these small margins and be able to 100% confidently go for her shots. That's the whole thing with her game. She can generate all the power she needs. She just needs a frame to give her the control and confidence to hit out. And that's why she uses the 1820 pattern. If you need a little bit more lift on your shots, you want a little bit more forgiveness and height over the net for free, uh, then the 1619 pattern is a better choice generally. And these are not the only string patterns on the market, 1820 or 1619. There are a bunch of different ones. Wilson used to have the spin effect patterns, which were like 1516, really open string beds, a lot of string movement, a lot of spin generated because the ball would be grabbed by the string and the strings would move and the ball would shoot out. You have the Prince Phantom, it's a 1418 string bed, really open, very spin friendly despite the smaller head size. There are a lot of variants, there's 1620 which is kind of a hybrid pattern with a little bit more spin but still very good directional control. There's 1819 like Medvedev and Djokovic where it's uh, you know a very tight string pattern but it will give you a little bit more lift on your shots, a little bit more than a classical 1820. And over the years, there's been tighter string pattern, even, you know, 22, 23, like the old head radial frame. And uh, there are uh, some crazy string patterns, of course, in the market. But the most common ones are 1820, maximum control, tight pattern, and 1619. But just saying the mains and the crosses don't tell the whole story. When I describe a 1619 pattern as tight, it means that the drill pattern, the, the holes of the grommets in the racket have been drilled pretty close together to give you more control, but you still have some spin usually out on the edges of the racket. And a tight 1619 string pattern or an open 1820 string pattern are definitely possible, depends on the head shape, the drilling of the grommet holes, uh, and so on. And I'll, I'll give you a few examples. This is a, a personalized uh, Radical Pro that had, was kind enough to send me. It says, uh, Jonas up here, which is pretty cool, really like that. But this one has a pretty tight 1619 string pattern. You can see in the center of the string bed, it's a pretty tight spacing here. There's not a lot of variance in how the ball will impact the string bed. If you have a bigger holes, obviously the ball will be, you know, impact the string, the strings will move more. And if there are poly strings, they will snap back, but they will generate a lot more action in the string bed than this. This one is pretty tight, pretty boardy for a 1619 pattern. It more resembles an 1820 pattern. The thing with this is that um, it's a little bit more open to the sides to give you a bit more forgiveness on off-center shots, a little bit more spin potential over many 1820 patterns. So this is a tight 1619 pattern, which makes it controlled, but a little bit more spin friendly than the classical 1820. And the head size makes a difference. So this is 98 square inches and uh, which is kind of in the middle of head size ranges these days. You can then get a 95 with a 1820 pattern that's really tight. If you take this racket, for example, the old Eye Prestige, very tight. You can see this, the center holes here are extremely tight. This will give fantastic directional control. You can really hit flat with ultra confidence, but you're not gonna get a lot of <clears throat> lift on the ball for free. You're gonna have to generate all the top spin you need yourself. You have to do it with your windshield wiper motion and your technique. You can't rely on the racket to give you any lift uh, over the net uh, compared to other open patterns. So this one is kind of a tight 1820 on a 95 square inch racket. So you have a pretty controlled string bed. That can also be stiff. So the, <clears throat> the tighter the string bed, the stiffer the string bed will be. So players with arm issues, uh, playing with small head sizes with tight string beds should avoid using a full bed of poly in my opinion. Because if a full bed of poly in a tight string pattern Stiffness matters, of course, but it will make a stiffer string bed. So if you have a very open string bed, very open pattern, it will generate a more lively string bed, a more comfortable string bed in general. And I have an example that we'll look at. It's my old soft drive, strung with a gold multi-filament 
and this is moving because this is a multi-filament the multi-filaments move and uh, they don't really automatically snap back into place after a shot so with these very open holes and open pattern on the bubble at soft drive it, it's going to eat strings more quickly and similar to what the clash does you have to kind of snap them back into place uh, so this open 6019 while the radical had a tight 6019 head size makes a difference obviously but this one is definitely open even for a 100 square inch racket i can take another 100 square inch racket and so, show you a tighter 1619 for example the instinct mp that i'm testing at the moment has a much tighter string bed uh, in the center so if you compare them i hope you can see this but this one is is definitely a bit tighter the holes are smaller and will generate more directional control this one a little bit easier to control the ball although it's different and that's another topic but it is uh, a tight has a tighter string bed this one doesn't really suit my game as much although i really like the feel of the soft drive because i like to hit the ball more flat and this one has such a kind of high launch angle thanks to the open uh, string pattern so it's not really suiting my style more a guy like hitting like rafa or with a lot of top spin they, they would really like this open 6019 i prefer generally these tighter 6019 like this one like the dunlop fx 500 which where the string bed is really dense like i said there are other string patterns as well we have the encode and tour which has a 1620 so the 16 is the mains pretty open but it's a 95 square inch racket so it's it's somewhat open the holes are a little bit bigger than the 1820 pattern of the prestige but uh, more crosses for better directional control so you have to see what happens in the center of the string bed and this is relatively tight but not as tight as the i prestige and that's why i like 1620 or 1819 they they are um a bit of a hybrid in a way that you you really get some spin but you still have good directional control so i think they kind of land in the middle there on this prince pro stock we have a different string pattern we have a 1618 which is what prince uses for a lot of the rackets and uh, as you can see it has quite uh, a wide open holes here center is a little bit tighter but it's still pretty open still this racket handles the slice pretty well can handle some flat shots but it is quite an open pattern if i would compare it to this, uh, which is the re retail version of the Prince. This is a pro stock, uh, which means this is not the actual EXO Tour. This is the O Tour. And you can see it from the side here that the, the O ports are different. This is EXO, which is more rectangular. This is O port, which is more rounded. But this one has 1820, so it's a lot tighter. And uh, this one is, is, will give you a little bit more spin lift on the ball, a little bit more forgiveness, easier to generate spin, but also less control than this one, which is ultra controlled. If you compare 1820 on a 100 square inch racket and an 1820 on a 95 square inch racket, the 95 is generally going to be tighter and more controlled than the 100 square inch 1820. And if we want to talk about tight patterns, we can go down uh, as far as the iPrestige mid, which is very tight in the middle here strung with yonex rexis uh, ps very good string this one is very tight obviously because it's a very small head size 89.5 square inches and 1820 pattern um, you can still generate topspin with it but it's not going to come easy you know so you have to do all the work yourself but on flat shots you get ultimate control volleys when this racket was in its you know heyday in its prime when it was released there was definitely a lot more volume going on and uh, there were not as much topspin on the ball as the modern game is today where you, you need more lift. Many rec players feel like also they need more lift because they don't have that natural uh, windshield wiper technique perhaps. So this one is definitely old school frame, still playable today, but not the most forgiving and easy to use with the small head size and the tight string bed. So those are some musings about string patterns. Look at the grommets, look at the center of the string bed. Try to figure out like if this is a tight pattern or an open pattern. Consider that, that before you buy a racket, whether it suits your game or not. If you're a flat hitter, generally you would like a, a tighter pattern for more control because you have smaller margins to work with. So you need a racket to give you more control. Some flatter hitters prefer to have an open pattern because they want a little bit more lift on the ball, but that's not going to be very controlled in a way because you're hitting the ball flat and you have an extra lift from the racket that's going to be hard to gauge. So it depends a little bit on your taste. The most popular string pattern on the ATP Tour is the 1820 pattern because they can generate enough spin themselves. They don't need the 6019, but now with the younger generation coming up, you're seeing more and more open patterns. But historically, it's been 1820 
now you're seeing a few more different patterns out there but not any crazy ones uh, generally like 15 16 the wilson spin effect rackets are not really used on tour most pro players on wta and atp they need more control so they can't go and and use like a very kind of erratic string pattern and uh where, where they don't know the ball they hit enough balls they need 100 percent confidence in, in where the ball is going so for them the string pattern is very important and you will that's why you will see tighter string patterns on the tours so take the string pattern into consideration keen to hear what your favorite string pattern is and why I tend to gravitate towards 1820s always been that way i've, I've always had a kind of a flat uh, style of, of play changed it up over the last couple of years uh, as i've played more and more tennis but uh, still i feel more at home with the 1820 although i I've, since i've been testing hundreds and hundreds of rackets over the years I've, I've, i'm fine playing with whatever really because i have to adjust my style anyway but generally 1820s is where my home is uh, where i feel most confident to swing out on on a flatter shot that's all on this vlog about string patterns i hope you found it useful i hope you find it interesting if you do please click like share subscribe Turn on notifications so you know when I upload all kinds of help uh, to grow the channel is much, much appreciated. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following. I wish you all a very nice day. And don't forget to play some tennis.